What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're talking our top must-own players for this 2020 fantasy football season. Now, before we get into it, we do have one big announcement to make, and that is starting next week for a limited time, from August 27th to August 31st, we will be doing a free giveaway of our 2020 ADP fantasy football draft guide. And that means... It'll include everything from our top 150 overall player rankings in standard and PPR formats to individual player bios, tiers, projections across all positions, along with our general sections on fantasy football advice. And everybody is eligible. All you have to do is two simple things. First and foremost, subscribe to the channel. That is step one. Then go ahead in the comment section, leave a reply saying subscribed with also your Twitter handle because step two two is that afterwards you just have to go on all day pigskins twitter give us a follow and then shoot us a message saying what your email is and from there we will go ahead and give you our complimentary 2020 adp fantasy football draft guide and again as long as you are in that span of time from august 27th to august 31st and you do those two things you are golden and don't worry we'll go ahead and leave the details in the description but with that being said let's get into this breakdown where again we're going over our top must own players guys that we're going to be targeting across all leagues no matter the format because we see great value at their current average draft position regardless if they're going a little bit earlier or a little bit later because all these guys in the respective positions have top 10 top 15 upside so with that being said let's get right into it kicking off our list we have got Clyde Edwards Lair of the Kansas City Chiefs and naturally after the decision of Damian Williams to opt out for 2020 the value for CEH skyrocketed but guess what now it's actually warranted yet even though CEH is usually a first round selection now his ADP is between probably picks 5 and 8, 9, 10, whereas his upside is top 4, top 5 type of running back finish. Currently, we have him as our 7th overall projected running back across all formats, but when talking upside, you have to love the situation for CEH. The sky is the limit. He's in a situation where he's on one of the best offenses in the NFL with one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL that will have weekly high scoring potential. His upside for touchdown scored is incredible. And if you look at the history of Andy Reid running backs, you have to get excited because he has a history of producing top 10 talent all the way from DeMarco Murray, LaShawn McCoy, Brian Westbrook, Jamal Charles, Kareem Hunt, and now potentially Clyde edwards Elaire. Even with him being a mid-first round selection, this is a guy that has huge breakout potential, pretty much maybe in the category of a Saquon Barkley during his rookie season, and we all remember how that turned out. This is a perfect situation for Clyde edwards Elaire. There was a reason why he was the only running back selected in the first round and the only ever running back selected by Andy Reid in the first round in his NFL career. For that reason, we love CEH in 2020 and are targeting him everywhere. Next up, we have got Kenyon Drake of the Arizona Cardinals. And this is a guy that's probably an early second round selection, but we love the upside yet again. A comp that we think could be accurate is between him and what Dalvin Cook was being viewed as last year. And if you remember, Dalvin Cook's ADP last season in 2019 was an early second round selection to mid second round, but he had top five running back upside or right outside of that mark. And the reason we say that this holds for Kenyon Drake First and foremost, obviously, no more David Johnson for the Arizona Cardinals. And we saw what Kenyon Drake did once he joined Arizona. He absolutely balled out, not only as a pass catcher, which, by the way, the Cardinals staff have said they want to get him more involved in, but also as a pure rusher. He had several breakout games versus some stiff competition in the San Francisco 49ers several times. 
Now, this is an offense that also improved the offensive line a little bit. It's got another breakout candidate in Kyler Murray at the quarterback position. It's got an offense that's extremely high scoring and should be one of the top units in fantasy football in 2020. And also added DeAndre Hopkins, who will open things up for everybody. The point being is the value for Kenyon Drake right now is great, and he's being slightly undervalued. If for some reason you are also happen to be worried about Drake in terms of him holding up for the entirety of the season, well guess what? He's in a great situation to go ahead and invest in his handcuff in Chase Edmonds, one of the top handcuffs for 2020. So if for some reason you're worried about Drake's durability, you've got that solution right there behind him and it won't cost you all that much. For that reason, we love the running back situation in Arizona. Moving on, we've got Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A little bit unfairly, now Evans has become maybe the second fiddle in the wide receiver core in Tampa Bay behind Chris Godwin. And looks, it makes sense. Godwin had a huge breakout season. He outperformed Evans in 2019. But the addition of Tom Brady will help out everyone and will introduce more stability for Evans, which was an issue with Jameis Winston at the helm. And speaking of value, Evans right now is going towards the end of the second round to maybe middle of the third round, which is absolutely insane. Look, even if you do have Chris Godwin ranked above Mike Evans, the separation between the two in terms of projections shouldn't be all that much. You know, the gap in between draft picks between those two guys should probably be one, two, three at most, but that's not the case right now. So you guys should take advantage of the situation. Evans has huge touchdown upside. Bruce Arians is still the head coach there in Tampa Bay, and he's going to give the green light for Tom to go ahead and spread out the football. For that reason, we love Mike Evans. We think that the Bucks offense yet again has upside to retain two top 10 fantasy wide receivers with Mike Evans potentially being the much better value and a guy that can absolutely become that number one wide receiver for this offense again. Next up, we've got Adam Thielen of the Minnesota Vikings. And similar to Mike Evans, Thielen is being underrated right now, going ADP-wise probably mid to late third round, if not later. But again, he has got top 10 upside, even more so in PPR formats. Now, yes, last season was a disappointment for Thielen. He was hurt and didn't really produce. But guess what? No more Stephon Diggs on this team means Thielen is the unquestioned number one wide receiver, and with there being a slight drop-off in wide receiver talent afterwards, you better believe the volume will be incredible for Thielen. Yes, the Vikings are a run-first team, but Thielen is still their number one choice at the wide receiver position, and Kirk Cousins loves this guy. Look, prior to last season, Thielen was averaging over 100 receptions for 1,000 plus yards. This guy is extremely talented. And Kirk Cousins, prior to last year, the last several seasons, was averaging over 4,000 plus passing yards. So the opportunities will be there. The upside in terms of receiving yards will also be there. Thielen will be the main guy that has fed the football. We love the upside. We think that Thielen absolutely can be your wide receiver one on your roster and that without Diggs, opportunities will be a plenty and you're going to see flashes of 2018 Adam Thielen. Moving on, we've got Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons. And Ridley is a guy that we've been hyping up for a while now, even before the Chris Godwin comparisons began. But look, those comparisons began for a good reason, because similar to Godwin of last year, who was one of the biggest, if not biggest, wide receiver breakouts in 2019, Ridley has a lot of those shared features. First and foremost, he's playing opposite a top three wide receiver in Julio Jones. He's on a pass-heavy offense that was number one in the entire NFL in 2019 in terms of pass attempts. He's got an MVP quarterback in Matt Ryan, and entering his third season, he is primed for a breakout role. This Atlanta offense also plays in the NFC South, which we absolutely love, and for any one player on this team that is in the NFC South, the following holds. 
They will be playing teams like the Bucks, like the Saints, like the Falcons twice a year. Those affairs will all be extremely high scoring. And for that reason, this division will be a goldmine for fantasy football. We believe that right now, even at his current ADP of probably an early fourth round selection, Ridley has wide receiver one upside. And in 2020, he will continue to narrow the gap between himself and Julio Jones. Continuing on, we have got Robert Woods of the LA Rams. And with Woods, he's also been another one of these wide receiver two type of range guys with huge upside that's being drafted in that range of a Calvin Ridley in the middle of the fourth round. But again, he's someone that has wide receiver one upside. Similar to a Cooper Cup, who let's be clear, we also really like on this LA Rams offense. Woods will see plenty of targets. He'll probably be a lock for a thousand plus yards. He's extremely reliable and he will likely see positive touchdown regression. All these things make us believe in Robert Woods, that he could be the wide receiver one for the LA Rams. Now, depending on the platform you're drafting on, there could be a sizable difference in between ADP of Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. If Woods is significantly lower, we urge you, go ahead, take advantage of this situation. The Rams offense won't be run-oriented like it has been in years past. The offensive line is shaky, no more Todd Gurley. They will be pass-heavy yet again like 2019, and with no more Brendan Cooks, Robert Woods and Cooper Cup will be the main beneficiaries. If the Rams really do run more two tight end sets, expect Robert Woods to get even more playing time. For that reason, we love the upside of Woods in 2020. Moving on, we've got James Conner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Conner is probably one of the highest risers in ADP compared to a few months back where he was probably a sixth round selection now, probably early fourth round, if not sooner. And we've been talking up Conner for months now because think about it this way a guy that you can get in the fourth round with top 15 upside on a great offense with a great offensive line and that's a workhorse that doesn't happen often at the most important position mind you that the running back position because yes last season was disappointing for connor there's going to be some recency bias people disappointed at how high they drafted him but guess what right now he's healthy big ben is healthy and as soon as Roethlisberger got hurt in week two last year, every single offensive player had their season washed for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, James Conner was hurt, and you do have to factor that risk into the equation, but the reward is much higher than the risk right now. With Big Ben healthy, this is a completely different offense. They have much higher scoring potential. Connor is invo involved in every facet of the offense for this team. And with the Pittsburgh Steelers defense projected to be a top 10 unit, they will produce a lot more opportunities for the offense, which will all trickle down to Connor. For that reason, we love him in 2020. Next up, we've got David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears. One of the most exciting sophomore running backs in terms of his potential increase in production in 2020 compared to 2019. Right now, Montgomery's ADP is probably in the fifth to sixth round. But again, he's one of these guys that will be a workhorse running back for his team. His main competition is Tariq Cohen, who's a pass catching running back. The Bears themselves have said they want to go ahead and use a bigger load of Montgomery He's going to be the main goal line running back. That's always great, regardless of who you are. And with the philosophy of being a run first offense because of their current quarterback situation, with it being a game manager type of role with Foles or Trubisky, and with a great defense, this is a match made in heaven for David Montgomery. Yes, there's some question marks on the offensive line, but we believe that volume will prevail here, and we expect a major jump in production. The fact that you can potentially get a mid to low end RB1 in the fifth or sixth round is something that we're extremely excited for, and we're all aboard the David Montgomery hype train in 2020. Getting to our first tight end, we have got Darren Waller of the Las Vegas Raiders. 
And for a guy that had a huge breakout season last year, he's kind of being forgotten a little bit. There's guys naturally like a Kelsey and a Kittle being drafted ahead of him. But then there's also guys like an Ertz, like a Mark Andrews that are going ahead of Darren Waller. And we'd probably say that out of those guys, especially in PPR formats, Darren Waller has the highest ceiling. Now, yes, the Raiders went ahead and added some talent at the wide receiver position, but there's a couple rookies in there. And with no preseason, we expect them to get a slower start out of the gate. And keep in mind that Darren Waller made that connection with Derek Carr last season. He's got that relationship built. We think that he's still going to be the main target on this offense, both in terms of receptions and in terms of yards. We love his upside as a red zone threat. And the fact that you can get him in the sixth round as the most proven weapon on this Raiders offense at a tight end position that's a wasteland from year to year is an absolute steal. Next up, we have got Evan Ingram of the New York Giants. And Ingram is a guy that we continue to be high on. Yes, we realize he has had an injury history. But again, that plays into the fact that his ADP is now lower and prime for taking advantage of because you can get Ingram in the sixth, seventh round. And similar to a Darren Waller at a position that's a wasteland from year to year like tight end, Ingram has huge breakout upside. In fact, we saw that take place last season in the first eight weeks before he got injured because if you extrapolate that data, he was in store for a top five tight end season with over 900 receiving yards between six and eight touchdowns. And that's honestly what we project for him in 2020. On an offense with more quarterback stability, with Daniel Jones being the guy, and a quarterback that airs it out an underrated amount like Jones, on an offense that creates mismatches for Ingram wherever he lines up versus opposing defenses, he presents a nice mismatch, especially in the red zone as well. If Ingram plays the majority of this season, he will be a surefire top five tight end in 2020. We love the upside. Yes, there's some injury history. Right now he's healthy and at a price of a seventh round selection, maybe even eighth round selection, depending on your league size and scoring format, he is absolutely worth the risk. Next up, we have got T.Y. Hilton, and this has everything to do with the addition of Phillip Rivers because having him as the main quarterback is an absolute game changer. And as you'll see, there's a couple of other Colts that we really like offensively. But looking at Hilton, first and foremost, he is the unquestioned number one guy on this offense and will be the main target offensively for Rivers. On top of this, T.Y. Hilton before has produced wide receiver one numbers but maybe in the past combined with his injury history from time to time you haven't been willing to pay the price of a late second round selection but guess what in 2020 you can get him anywhere between the fourth to fifth round and he still has that wide receiver upside if not more so now than years past because rivers is a guy that will go ahead and air out the football. Last season for the Chargers, he had over 4,600 passing yards. There's a great offensive line on this team, one of the best in the NFL. It will give Rivers plenty of time to find his most proven target on this offense, which is T.Y. Hilton. We believe that you're going to see easily over 1,000 yards for Hilton, and we love his upside as a wide receiver one mid to low end wide receiver one in the fourth or fifth round continuing on we have got julian edelman of the new england patriots and how quickly things change because a couple of months ago edelman was on our you know bust list but the addition of cam newton changed things quickly because now similar to last year edelman is a guy that we're saying go ahead and target we made our case last season that Edelman was someone that you had to own. Incredibly consistent. The number one option for Tom Brady. And a guy that every single week, especially in PPR formats, no problem give you between 14 and 15 points on the regular. And wouldn't you know it, he was a top 10 fantasy scoring wide receiver in 2019. 
and we believe he's got the potential to be right around that range yet again in 2020 because what has changed all that much? You've got a new quarterback in Cam Newton, but the situation with Edelman, he's still the main target. He's still the best wide receiver on this offense. The next best wide receiver is probably playing running back with James White. You know that Cam Newton will heavily target Julian Edelman. We love the upside. We love the consistency factor. And we're going to go ahead and absolutely take a chance on Julian Edelman, whose ADP has not caught up to the situation yet. Right now, he can go anywhere from a fifth round selection to a seventh round selection. Do your homework. Do yourself a favor. Getting Julian Edelman in the fifth round, even in the sixth round, is an absolute steal. Next up, we have got Brendan Cooks of the Houston Texans, and Cooks has been a wide receiver that we have been extremely excited about since he joined the team and DeAndre Hopkins left because now there's a huge void at that wide receiver position. And yes, people are worried. There's a concussion history there for Cooks, and it cost him some time. But guess what? Right now, he's healthy. That's how we project things. We project things for how they are, not how they could be. And if you really do want to focus on the injury situation, well, why aren't people focusing in on that issue for the guy that they're presuming will be the wide receiver one in Will Fuller? Because Fuller has never, and I repeat, never in his NFL career played a full 16 games. And prior to last season, Brennan Cooks was on a stretch of several 1,000 plus yard receiving seasons. We think that he can go ahead and do the same thing for the Houston Texans. He's a similar type of guy like a Will Fuller. He's got speed, he's still relatively young, and by far though, he's the most experienced wide receiver on this offense. We think he has the most upside here, and at a value of an eighth or ninth round pick, for someone that can be a low-end wide receiver one, we are absolutely taking the chance on Brendan Cooks across all formats. Next up, we've got Kareem Hunt of the Cleveland Browns. And it's not often that we include a backup running back on a list like this, but it's also not all that often where the backup running back is a better overall player than the starter. And that is the case with Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Because sure, Chubb dominated on the ground last season, but what happened once Kareem Hunt returns from suspension? Like we told you guys, there was a drop-off in production from Chubb, and on a week-to-week -week comparison, Chubb and Kareem Hunt weren't separated by all that much. Now, when you go ahead and look at the fact that Kareem Hunt is the unquestioned pass-catching running back on this team, and the fact that he also is a guy that will benefit from an improved offensive line, from head coaching staff that's been added that has a run-first mentality, well, Kareem Hunt is someone that becomes tempting. Now, compare the average draft positions of these two guys. Chubb, a second router. Kareem Hunt, someone in the 8th, ninth round that you can get and potentially go ahead and plug him in at a flex spot and for him to give you between 10 and 13 points on a week-to-week -week basis. That's sensational. And then also, the outside chance that if something were to happen to Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt becomes a top 5 slam dunk running back. Well, that's upside that's very hard to ignore. For that reason, we love Hunt in 2020. Next up, we've got Ronald Jones of the Tampa Bay Bucks. And similar to when we were looking at Mike Evans, all these things hold true for Jones. Again, he's in a great offense. He's in a high-scoring division where the Bucks face the Saints and the Falcons each twice a season. And with Brady and all those weapons, there will be plenty of high-scoring opportunities. Now, yes, Ronald Jones is unproven. Yes, there's some other running backs there in Keyshawn Vaughn, who's a rookie and is now behind the eight ball with no preseason. Also, the addition of LaShawn McCoy, but he's at the back end of his career, so we're not all that worried about him. And in fact, coaches have said that Ronald Jones seems to be the guy. And there's no guarantee that the Bucks will have a great rushing year, but on the off chance that it does happen, Jones going in the eighth to ninth round has RB1 upside, maybe low-end RB1 upside, but nonetheless RB1 upside. And for that chance, we believe taking a chance on him is absolutely justified. This will be a high-scoring offense, and Jones should see some opportunities. All he has to do is capitalize on them, and then he should be the guy going forward for the rest of the season. 
Next up, we've got Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. And you're probably surprised for this name not to be Jonathan Taylor, but we've said it before, for every rookie running back not named Clyde edwards Lair, we hate the situation and we would be avoiding them in this 2020 season. Obviously, one of the primary reasons is because of the current COVID situation. No preseason. There's not all that much chemistry being built between these rookies and their other teammates. And the veterans will now naturally have a leg up. Whereas in previous years, maybe the rookies could gone ahead and separated themselves a little bit. But the Colts have even said that they expect Mac and Taylor to be a one-two punch. Factor into this that Mac is coming off his best season in 2019, and he should rightfully have a leg up on Jonathan Taylor. Now, Taylor is being drafted probably, you know, in the fourth round in drafts, and Mac is going four or five rounds after that, and that's absolutely insane. Okay, sure, you might like Jonathan Taylor, but what's your reasoning for having Marlon Mack that much lower? Honestly, in standard and in PPR formats, these guys are very similar type of running backs. They're bruising rushers that don't have much upside as pass catchers. So, you know, at most, their separation should probably be a round. But that's not the case, and that presents huge upside. Mack will still continue to run behind this great offensive line and as someone that is proven will probably get the majority of opportunities early on and unless there's an injury or something like that this will continue to be a one two punch where we believe that Marlon Mack will have the leg up. Getting to our first quarterback, we have got Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons, and it's no secret that we love this Atlanta offense. Like we said for Calvin Ridley, Matt Ryan is in a great situation. He's got all the weapons that you could want, a top three wide receiver in Julio Jones. Calvin Ridley, a guy that's ready to break out, a good tight end in Hayden Hurst, in addition in Todd Gurley, a healthier, improved offensive line. And also, another year with the current offensive coordinator, we've already said that the Falcons are a pass-heavy team. There will be plenty of opportunities for Matt Ryan this season. He plays in the NFC South again, and that's a big deal. Goes up against the Bucks and the Saints each twice every single year. Those will be high-scoring contests. And for Matt Ryan, we think he has top five upside. Right now, he's being drafted around the 10th overall quarterback but upside alone even last season with the game missed he was around 4500 passing yards the volume and opportunities will be there we think that the falcons offensively will be more efficient and higher scoring for those reasons we love matt ryan as a potential sleeper at the quarterback position that you can get late Moving on, we've got Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and no matter how old TB12 gets, he's still someone that you want to target, even more so this year. In a new home in Tampa Bay, no matter, we love the upside here because Brady, in his entire NFL career, which has been a lengthy one, has never had a better group of weapons around him. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, both two top 10 type of wide receivers. The tight end position is loaded. Brait, Howard, and Gronkowski. There's an improved offensive line and a head coach that will allow you to air it out at the quarterback position. That has been his M.O. Playing in the NFC South on top of that, age does not matter here. Brady is an absolute steal in 2020. He's being drafted around the 10th, if not later, overall quarterback in fantasy drafts. That is absolutely insane. We love Brady. Similar to a Matt Ryan, both these guys have huge upside and should have huge scoring opportunities on a week-to-week -week basis. Next, we have got one more quarterback, and that is Cam Newton of the New England Patriots. And with Cam, he's a guy that's being drafted outside of the top 10, maybe even outside of the top 15, and potentially as your backup quarterback. But guess what? He can be the Lamar Jackson of 2020. And even more so because we know he's done it before. He's had an MVP season with worse pieces arguably around him than what he has in New England currently. And if you think about it, yes, 
Cam still hasn't been named the starter, but by all accounts, he will be the guy. He's by far the most experienced quarterback in that room, and he's got a huge floor. He's a huge mismatch for defenses because of what he can do with his legs. He's got huge touchdown upside, especially in the rushing department, huge rushing yard upside. You know, when healthy, the guy has put up 300 400 500 rushing yards and that's incredibly important in fantasy football because like we said it raises that floor for your quarterback every single week even if they struggle in the passing department and also this is a make or break year for cam newton on a one-year deal a prove a deal a year where he's probably playing for his NFL career. We think he's going to come out and be extremely motivated. He still got a Julian Edelman. He still got guys like Michelle, Lamar Miller, James White, Nikhil Harry, Muhammad Sanu. There will be pieces there. A decent offensive line, a decent defense. And in a division that's not all that intimidating, we love Cam Newton at his current ADP and think and think if you take a chance on him in 2020, you might be rewarded with a vintage Cam Newton season. And finally, getting to our final inclusion on this top must own list, we have got Jack Doyle of the Indianapolis Colts. And we told you guys, we like the Colts offense this year. It has everything to do with the addition of Philip Rivers. And if T.Y. Hilton is the number one option, well, guess what? Jack Doyle is that number two guy. He's the second most experienced guy on this offense. He's a proven pass catcher. And with Eric Ebron gone, he will have plenty of opportunities. We're not all that worried from the addition of Trey Burden. He's been someone that's kind of struggled these last few years. And Jack Doyle definitely has a leg up on him. We know that Philip Rivers loves his tight ends. Look at Hunter Henry. Look at Antonio Gates. This is an offense that will have a much bigger bump in passing upside this year. Like we said, Rivers is a guy that had... 4,600 plus passing yards last year. We think he'll be right around that 4,500 range in 2020. For that reason, a tight end that's being maybe undrafted or being drafted around the 15th to 20th overall tight end. If you're looking for a breakout at that position, we love Doyle across all formats in 2020. So with that, we wrap up this list of our top must-own players for the 2020 fantasy football season. And again, we want to remind you guys of our exclusive free 2020 ADP fantasy football draft guide giveaway. Like we mentioned before, from August 27th to August 31st, all you guys have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead, follow us on Twitter, leave us your email there, and then we will take care of the rest. All the details are in the description, so you can check that out there. And as always, if you guys have any comments, let us hear it below if you guys agreed disagreed with this list who else is on your own personal top must own player list along with any other fantasy questions we will do our best to answer also check us out online at alldaypigskin.com for some exclusive content if you guys enjoyed hit that like button subscribe and in the meantime we'll see you guys in future videos